4,500 years ago, one of the greatest feats in human history was achieved. The ancient Egyptians constructed the first pyramids. A marvel so spectacular it even has many scientists and archaeologists awed. They simply can't fathom how such structures could be constructed in an era deemed to be primitive. Well, that's the marvel of Egypt, the core of civilization. Its people have contributed greatly to our present-day appreciation of math, science, and art. Egypt is a country in the northeastern corner of Africa. Egypt's heartland, the Nile River Valley and Delta, was home to one of the ancient Middle East's most important civilizations, as well as one of the world's first urban and literary cultures, similar to Mesopotamia further east. Pharaonic Egypt flourished for about 3,000 years, alternating between native dynasties and brief periods of foreign rule. Urban Egypt became an important element of the Hellenistic civilization after Alexander the Great conquered the country in 323 BCE. The city of Alexandria flourished under the Greek Ptolemaic dynasty, but in 30 BCE, the Romans seized Egypt. Egypt eventually became one of the Arab and Islamic world's intellectual and cultural centers, a position it cemented in the mid-13th century when Mongol troops attacked Baghdad and terminated the Abbasid Caliphate. The population of the Nile Valley and Delta, which is home to the vast majority of Egyptians, is a reasonably homogeneous community with dominant physical traits resulting from the combination of indigenous African and Arab ancestors. Foreign conquerors and immigrants such as Persians, Romans, Greeks, Crusaders, Turks, and Circassians long ago left behind a more diversified combination of physical kinds inside urban regions, particularly the northern Delta towns. There are more people with blonde and red hair, blue eyes, and lighter complexions than in the Delta's rural areas, where peasant agriculturists, known as Fellahin, have been less affected by marriages with outside groups. Enough of Egypt's history and past glories. Now, let us look at present-day Egypt. We want to look at why contemporary Egypt is rich. However, before we start, please take two seconds to hit the like button so that this educative video you're enjoying reaches more viewers. Let's talk about Egypt's economy. Egypt has a GDP of 363 billion US dollars. Despite the fact that the 1971 constitution classified the economy as socialist, with the people controlling the means of production, the public sector controlled the economy for only around two decades after the 1952 revolution, prior to which the country enjoyed a free market. The majority of major nationalization occurred between 1961 and the early 1970s so when the majority of important sectors of the economy were either public or tightly regulated by the government. Large-scale industry, communications, banking and finance, the cotton trade, overall international trade, and other sectors were included. During that time, private enterprise steadily saw its scope narrowed, but there was still some leeway in real estate, agriculture, and, later, the export sector. The government imposed tight restrictions on personal income and land ownership. Furthermore, when the government did not own the means of production, it regulated all major areas of production and distribution. It regulated agricultural prices, set rents, managed internal trade, prohibited overseas travel and the use of foreign currency, and established and monitored corporate boards of directors. Projects were started by the government and funds were granted. Some of these limits were removed in the last quarter of the 20th century as part of the economic policy enacted in the early 1970s, allowing greater private sector participation in many fields. Although corporate boards of directors are now in charge of day-to-day -day operations, they nevertheless receive instructions from public boards and board chairmen frequently coordinate their production policies with the relevant state minister. To guide economic development, the government creates five-year development plans. Similarly, the Egyptian government has been campaigning for increasing international investment since the early 1970s, first obtaining financial aid from oil-rich Arab governments. Despite the fact that Arab aid was suspended as a punitive measure after Egypt signed a peace treaty with Israel in 1979, the subsequent return of several Western and Japanese corporations, aided by the normalization of Egyptian-Israeli relations, increased the potential for further foreign investment in Egypt. 
In the early 1980s, much of the government's work was focused on adjusting the economy to the situation created by the 1979 pact. Defense spending was lowered, while funding for roads, bridges, oil pipelines, telephone lines, and other infrastructure projects was raised. Egypt's economy began to strengthen, owing in part to new oil and natural gas fines, but also to increased Western aid. Egypt's GDP per capita increased dramatically in the late 1990s and the first decade of the 21st century, as the government tried to increase domestic output and overseas commerce. The economy, on the other hand, has continued to endure numerous challenges. Egypt's general level of living is low, and its economic resources are limited in comparison to the number of its population. The land is the country's principal source of natural resources, but there isn't enough productive land to feed the population. Increased population has put a strain on resources, resulting in persistent underemployment, prompting many Egyptians to seek work overseas. Political uncertainty following the 2011 uprisings that deposed President Hosni Mubarak had a detrimental influence on most sectors of the economy, with tourism, construction, and manufacturing suffering the most. About 96% of Egypt's overall area is desert. The lack of forests, permanent meadows, and pastures puts a strain on the available arable land, which accounts for only around 3% of the total land area. This small area, which supports an average of eight people per acre, is nonetheless extremely fertile and is cropped several times a year. Agriculture is still a significant part of Egypt's economy. It accounts for almost one-eighth of the country's GDP, employs roughly one-fourth of the workforce, and generates a significant portion of the country's foreign exchange through agricultural exports. Egypt's high population growth necessitated a farming intensification that was nearly unheard of elsewhere. Canals, drains, dams, water pumps, and barrages all require significant financial investment, as do professional labor, commercial fertilizers, and pesticides. Crop rotation, in addition to government regulations on the allocation of land to crops, the kinds that are grown, fertilizer and pesticide distribution, and marketing, contribute to good agricultural productivity. Egyptian agriculture, unlike that of other emerging countries, is largely orientated toward commercial rather than subsistence cultivation. Field crops account for over three-quarters of Egypt's total agricultural output, with the rest coming from livestock, fruits and vegetables, and other speciality crops. Egypt has two growing seasons, one for winter crops and the other for summer crops. Cotton is the most important summer field crop, absorbing much of the available labor and accounting for a significant amount of export value. Egypt is the world's leading producer of long staple cotton, accounting for roughly one-third of global production. Yet, Egyptian cotton production represents a minuscule percentage of global yield. Corn, rice, wheat, sorghum, and beans are among the most important field crops. Despite its high output, Egypt's grain production falls short of the country's complete consumption demands. A large percentage of the country's foreign cash is spent on the import of cereals and milling goods each year. Sugarcane, tomatoes, sugar beets, potatoes, and onions are all key crops. Many types of fruit are grown, and some are exported, such as citrus. The cycle of inundation and decreasing water of the High Nile and the Low Nile created the Egyptian year and regulated the lives of Egyptian farmers, and most Egyptians were linked to life on the land, from birth to death, from century to century, until the completion of the Aswan High Dam in 1970. The land's wealth, perhaps its very continuity, depended on the Nile's regular behavior. The three seasons of the Egyptian year were named by the land conditions caused by the river, Akit, which meant inundation, Parrot, which meant recovery, and Shamu, which meant lack of water. When the Nile acted as expected, which was most of the time, life went on as usual. When the flood failed or became excessive, disaster ensued. The Aswan High Dam allowed not just for flood control on the Nile, but also for the reclamation of enormous swaths of land for agricultural use. By 1975, the Aswan High Dam project had reclaimed almost 1 million acres of land, in addition to 700,000 acres that had been changed from basin irrigation to perennial irrigation. 
Egypt's mineral resources are limited in comparison to the country's physical size and population density. The quest for petroleum began earlier in Egypt than elsewhere in the Middle East, with small-scale production beginning in 1908. However, major results were not found until the mid-1970s, especially in the Gulf of Suez and areas of the Western Desert. Egypt had become a major oil producer by the early 1980s, despite the fact that total production was still minor by Middle Eastern standards. The Gulf of Suez Petroleum Company, often known as GUPCO, operates the Morgan, Ramadan, and July fields in the Gulf of Suez, as well as the Ab Rudis area of the C9 on the Gulf of Suez, which provide the majority of Egypt's petroleum. Egypt also obtains oil from fields in the western desert at Al Alamein and Razak. Some significant natural gas deposits have been discovered while searching for oil, including large quantities in the Delta and the Western Desert, as well as offshore under the Mediterranean Sea. In regions northeast of Alexandria, wells have been dug. In the North Delta, an Egyptian-Italian gas discovery was made in 1970, which was developed partially to provide a fertilizer factory and partly to fuel the industrial centers in the North and Northwest Delta. Abu Mahdi was the first Egyptian gas field to start producing in 1974. Other natural gas reserves may be found in the Western Desert, the Delta, the Mediterranean Shelf, and the Gulf of Suez, and by the early 21st century, natural gas output had begun to match that of oil, both as a domestic and export fuel. Egypt has a number of oil refineries, including two in Suez. In 1977, the first of Egypt's twin crude pipelines was completed, connecting the Gulf of Suez to the Mediterranean Sea near Alexandria. Samed, the Suez Mediterranean pipeline, is capable of transporting 2.5 million barrels of oil per day. A consortium of Arab countries, principally Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and Egypt, funded the Samed pipeline. A crude oil pipeline connecting Ras Shukair on the Red Sea coast and the refinery at Musarud, north of Cairo, was inaugurated in 1981. Additional oil pipelines connect Musarud to Alexandria, as well as fields near Hergada to Red Sea terminals. Manufacturing became one of the most important sectors of Egypt's economy during the 20th century, accounting for nearly one-fourth of GDP by the 21st century. Domestic manufacturing was weak from the late 1800s until around 1930 as a result of free trade rules that favored the importation of foreign goods. In 1930, the government put a customs duty on imported goods to foster the development of Egyptian manufacturers, motivated by the need to boost national income, diversify the economy, and meet the ambitions of the emerging nationalism. In the 1920s and 1930s, the Bank of Egypt provided loans to Egyptian entrepreneurs to help boost domestic output. Printing, cotton ginning, transportation, spinning and weaving, vegetable oil extraction, and the manufacture of medicines and rayon were among the businesses established. During World War II, Egypt was a key allied base, but was cut off from European imports, which drove the development of industry, particularly textile products. Following a long-term trade and aid deal with the Soviet Union in 1964, most large-scale manufacturing firms were nationalized and a focus was placed on building heavy industry. In 1970, a new aid arrangement with the Soviets allowed for the building of an iron and steel complex as well as the establishment of a number of power-based companies, including an aluminium complex that uses the high dam's power. In 1971, an ammonium nitrate facility was established at Helwan, based on gases generated in the steel mills coking unit. There is also a nitrate fertilizer facility at Aswan. Banking as we know it now dates back to the mid-19th century. The Bank of Egypt and the Anglo-Egyptian Bank were founded in 1858 and 1864, respectively. In 1866, the French bank Credit Lyonnais, followed by the Ottoman bank, and subsequently, other French, Italian, and Greek banks began operations in Egypt. The National Bank of Egypt and the Egyptian Agricultural Bank were both established with British funds. The Bank Misser was the first Egyptian bank. The National Bank of Egypt has performed the tasks of a central bank since its creation, a status that was recognized by law in 1951. 
All English and French banks and insurance businesses were nationalized and taken over by various Egyptian joint stock corporations in 1957. As a result, all shareholders, directors, and managers of those financial institutions were legally required to be Egyptian residents. Bank Misser was nationalized in 1960 after holding a number of industrial firms in addition to doing routine banking activities. The National Bank of Egypt, which had similarly been nationalized in 1960, was separated in 1961 into a commercial bank that retained its former name, and a central bank, the Central Bank of Egypt. In addition to the Central Bank, the government-sponsored Public Organization for Agricultural Credits and Cooperatives, the Development Industrial Bank, and three mortgage banks, all remaining financial institutions, were nationalized later that year, and their operations were concentrated in five commercial banks. The Egyptian pound, the national currency, is issued by the Central Bank. In the early 1970s, the government reformed the banking system once more, combining some of the biggest banks and assigning particular functions to the others. As part of a program aiming at liberalizing the economy, two new banks were established, and international banks were once again permitted to operate in the country. Joint banking projects between Egyptian and foreign banks were of particular importance. In 1980, Egypt formed its first international bank since the revolution, as well as a national investment bank. Imports typically account for one-third of Egypt's GDP, while exports account for one-tenth. Since World War II, exports have consistently lagged behind imports. From 1960 to 1965, the trade gap grew significantly as development spending increased, peaking in 1966. Following the 1973 war with Israel, a concerted attempt was made to restrict imports and increase exports, but it was largely unsuccessful. The trade deficit reached new highs in the early and mid-1980s, owing to a fall in petroleum export revenue and an increase in food imports. These issues are still present in the early 21st century. Transfers from abroad, notably the aid from Western governments and remittances from Egyptians working in other countries, helped to offset the massive visible trade deficit. Raw materials, mineral and chemical products, and capital goods such as machinery, electrical apparatuses, and transportation equipment account for about two-fifths of imports, while foodstuffs account for one-fifth and other consumer items for the remaining one-fifth. Petroleum and petroleum products are the most important exports, followed by raw cotton, cotton yarn, and textiles. Raw resources, mineral and chemical products, and capital goods are all exported. Agricultural exports include rice, onions, garlic, and citrus fruit. Egypt's most important trading partners are China, the United States, Italy, Germany, and the Gulf Arab countries. Egypt is a relatively wealthy country with a rich historical and cultural ancestry, which pioneered modern civilization as we know it. If you're an Egyptian and you're watching this, please let us know what you think in the comments. If you've ever visited Egypt and seen the pyramids, please tell us about your experience in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. It would mean a huge deal if we could reach 50,000 subs and we're almost there. Thanks for watching and see you in another video.